Paths of Glory, released in 1957, is not only one of Stanley Kubrick's best films, but possibly one of the most perfectly crafted movies of the 20th century. The film is set in World War I on the side of the French forces. Colonel Dax, Kirk Douglas, is pressured into leading a clearly futile strike to capture a strategic point called the Ant Hill, and when the attempt inevitably fails, three of his soldiers are chosen for court-martial and unfairly tried with cowardice in the face of the enemy. With a background in law before the war, Dex steps up to defend these men, as they face death by firing squad if they lose the case, but Dex's superiors are determined to make those soldiers into an example and impose their version of justice. This is an utterly enthralling film from start to finish. The characters are complex and well-developed, and the performances are astonishing, especially from Douglas as the gruff but noble Colonel Dax, George McCready as the coldly distinguished General Moreau, and those sad soldiers on death row. The film has a really impressively staged battle sequence and many skillful long takes, but the meat of the film is in its riveting courtroom sequence in which Colonel Dax defends his clients valiantly, but is impeded by the corrupt officials and their skewed, unjust conduct in the trial, which Dax and the viewer are both disgusted by. The film is extraordinarily tense and carries a palpable mood of psychological manipulation throughout, in General Brillard against General Moreau, Moreau against Colonel Dax, and in the prosecutor's harsh interrogation tactics, which lead the accused to incriminating answers. Kubrick also had the courage to not give this film a happy ending, as a happy ending would have been antithetical to the film's anti-war message. This is going to be an odd comparison, but Paths of Glory reminds me of Fist of Legend, or it should really be the other way round. If the host, as I've said before, is the Citizen Kane of monster movies, and Hero is the Citizen Kane of martial arts films, then Fist of Legend is the Paths of Glory of martial arts films. And I need to stop doing that. Fist of Legend is my favorite martial arts movie. It has amazing fight scenes, especially the blindfolded fight and Chen Zen's final fight with General Fujita, which is my favorite fight scene of all time, but it also has a great plot with very nuanced characters. Chen Zen is something of a folk hero in Chinese culture, and Fist of Legend, like most films featuring the character, is set during the Japanese occupation of Shanghai. Chen has numerous adversaries among the Japanese and Chinese throughout the film, but nearly all of them are sympathetic or relatable to some degree. Chen is in love with a Japanese girl named Mitsuko, and is thus ostracized and treated with hostility by the rest of the Jingwu Federation, who, as Chinese people under Japanese rule, have an understandable distrust toward the Japanese. A rift is formed between Chen and his friend Ting An, who is the master of Jing Wu, as Ting is jealous of Chen's influence and thinks he is trying to take his position. On the Japanese side, the pacifistic Japanese ambassador doesn't want the Chinese to be hurt or abused. The fighter Akutagawa, who killed Huo Yunja, Chen's master, in a duel, has a deep sense of honor, and Mitsuko's uncle Fumio has great respect for Chen, which is why they fight fairly and part ways, instead of Fumio killing Chen as ordered by General Fujita. General Fujita is cold and sadistic, and really the only bad guy, strictly speaking, in Fist of Legend, which has a surprisingly even-handed conflict and subtly written characters. Likewise, General Moreau and the prosecutor in Paths of Glory are arguably the only truly horrid and completely irredeemable characters. Moreau scolds a man for shell shock and is even prepared to have his own men shelled as punishment for perceived cowardice. Here are a couple of examples of the very nuanced characterization in Paths of Glory. Lieutenant Roger, Wayne Morris, who I think looks a lot like Owen Citizen, picks Corporal Paris for court-martial to prevent him from testifying against Roger's own cowardice and him accidentally killing a private during a nighttime scouting mission, but is genuinely shocked and remorseful when things go too far. General Brillard pressures General Moreau to order the attack on the anthill, and like him, believes in the need to punish the soldiers, but he still thinks that Moreau's methods are excessive. Even the soldiers on death row are portrayed as flawed. Private Ferrell lacks Corporal Paris's courage in the face of death, and Private Arnard mocks and violently rebuffs the priest sent to give them their last rites. After the soldier's execution, Colonel Dax expresses his revulsion at the men who allowed this travesty. Sir, would you like me to suggest what you can do with that promotion? Colonel Dax! 
You will apologize at once or I shall be placed under arrest. I apologize for not being entirely honest with you. I apologize for not revealing my true feelings. I apologize, sir, for not telling you sooner that you're a degenerate, sadistic old man. And you can go to hell before I apologize to you now or ever again! But with its morally complex characters, Paths of Glory is not a film about evil. Paths of Glory is ultimately a sobering examination of what war can reduce a human being to. War tends to trivialize human lives, as hundreds of thousands of people are used as pawns in small political or territorial goals, and the courtroom drama depicts the devaluing of human life by war in a different way, through military politics rather than outright battle. The three unfortunate soldiers are being sacrificed by their superiors for the sake of reputation and the supposed morale of the troops, and so are treated as expendable both inside and outside the trenches. Paths of Glory is one of the best films from one of the greatest directors in the history of film. I still don't like it as much as 2001 A Space Odyssey and The Shining, two of my all-time favorite films, but I think it's better than Lolita, Dr. Strangelove, and Eyes Wide Shut, which are great films in their own right, and it's certainly superior to Full Metal Jacket, Kubrick's other anti-war film from 30 years later. So that's it. You're making me the goat. The only completely innocent man in this whole affair. Yeah, fuck you too! Pods of Glory earns a full five stars out of five. Thanks for watching. Cheers.